Welcome to See Who's Small TV. I'm Vivian Tokai and my co-host Bill Kote. Hello, I'm Bill Court. Uh, Bill Sands, today's our topic is unagi, eel. Have you eaten it, it before? Yes, I have. You like it? Um, some of it. Some of it. Yes. So what, what other parts of <laughs> eel you don't like? Um, I used to eat eel often, but oh. I haven't eaten eel recently because of concern about the resource. But yesterday, uh -huh. I did uh, uh, sample this eel. Oh, you try skiers uh, unagyudon? I'm embarrassed to say yes, I did. So why are you embarrassed? Because I don't think we should be eating eel now. Uh -huh. Because the resource is so threatened and uh, uh, it's really, I think, in very severely uh, depressed resource. I think we've all got to avoid eel for a few years to let it come back. Yeah. It's a common shared notion about eel among Japanese, but uh, skia and a couple of other so-called fast food try to serve unagi uh, under the quite a relevant price, actually less expensive, uh, ex less expensive price. Uh, how did you find unagi udon at skia yesterday? Well, frankly, mm -hmm. It seemed to me to taste like fish meal. Fish meal? Yes. <laughs> what that mean? Um, well, frankly, I read recently that uh, uh, they've developed a way to successfully field, feed farmed eel uh, anchovy fish meal, and they had recently shifted from white fish fish meal to uh, horse mackerel fish meal. But um, I don't know, there was some influence from having read that article, but frankly, yesterday when I tasted this, I got the distinct impression of mm -hmm. it being, uh, tasting like um, uh, anchovy fish meal. <laughs> so this is the actual unagyudon. Uh, the eel look like a quite fat, quite a you know, big eel. So I think this is not a Nihon unagi, this is but, but the Bikara unagi, which is recently fairly common, imported from uh, Southeast Asia. Um, have, you, have you sensed fish meal taste, uh, fish, meal, fish meal from eel um, before? Like, no. You know? no. No? So no. Ha you haven't sensed fish meal taste uh, from the Nihon unagi before? No. Oh, this is your first time to taste Tastes like fish meal. Yes. Oh my god. So, which means bikara unagi might be fed by fish meal? Well, all, all as far as I'm aware, all farmed uh, unagi or farmed eel, uh -huh. at least in Japan, uh -huh. eats uh, a diet that's heavily composed of fish meal. It used to be more expensive white fish fish meal. Uh -huh. um, but uh, that eating fish meal is not unusual. Tasting like fish meal is <laughs> unusual. Why do they do they you know taste like fish meal? Do you have any idea? Um, no, frankly, you might wonder why it hasn't always tasted like fish meal because it does eat a lot of fish meal. However, um, part of it is is uh, anchovy fish meal does have a very distinctive. Uh, or excuse me, anchovy has a very distinctive taste and some of that can come through. Frankly, when I ate this yesterday, I mm -hmm. was surprised that it was so fat uh, mm -hmm. and relatively big, but uh, the taste um, was uh, another surprise. Of mm -hmm. course, eel, uh, the Japanese kabayaki, is served with a, a sauce and I think the sauce goes a long way to covering the original taste and uh, making a different taste, but it didn't, uh, it didn't cover the fish meal taste. Oh my. So, Bearson, you're coming from, originally coming from the United States. Yes. Have you eaten eel when you were in the United States? Um, uh, I can't remember having eaten it in the U.S. except uh, as the Japanese kabayaki mm -hmm. several times. At Japanese restaurant yes. or the Japanese Well, restaurant. frankly, uh, in the last few years, they've been selling it in supermarkets as well. In the United States? Yes. So, which means uh, common Americans start eating eels? Um, 
Yes, well, to some extent, um, uh, Americans and uh, Europeans have always eaten some eel. Mm -hmm. Um, but in the last few years, um, there's been uh, a big increase in the Japanese-style kabayaki mm -hmm. in restaurants, not only on the West Coast, but uh, in various other places in the U.S. Mm. But, you know, as long as I know, the original eating style of eels in the United States or EU, Iola, is like, you know, just, uh, just boiling or just you know just the grilling it's not like japanese style grill and the sweet soy sauce based sauce uh the the eating style is totally different yes but uh, they start adopting the asian or japanese way of eel eating style well not so much yeah a little bit um, <laughs> As uh, a they import uh mm -hmm. from uh japan or china mm -hmm. and and uh, serve it uh and in roughly the same way as the Japanese serve the kabayaki. Mm. So, when is your first experience to eat Japanese style kabayaki eel? Maybe 40 years ago when I first years. came to Japan. Uh -huh. So, what is your first reaction, impression? Frankly, I was a little cautious, uh -huh. uh, but it was very tasty. Um, it was uh, a little uh, soft and rich and uh, uh, high in oil content. It tasted very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I ate it uh, often and frequently put the uh, Sancho powder. Yes, very good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And 40 years <laughs> later, 40 years later, since you first experienced Unagi Kabayaki, this is the latest Japanese style eel and beef. <laughs> This is quite, you know, my my first impression of this unagi, eel kabayaki, and beef ball is like ugly. Don't you think it's ugly? Um, you might even say it's a sacrilege. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, the the unagi itself looks nice, um, and as you know, for the last several years, these low cost eateries like. Uh, uh, skia have been serving uh, unagi, but it, it's been very surprising to me because I hear on the one hand, particularly in the in North American and European press, that eel is threatened, that mm -hmm. uh, elvers, uh, catches of elvers have decreased dramatically, and I believe that the EU has either Washington Treaty listed or severely restricted mm -hmm. trade, and uh, the price, my God, of, of uh, Elvers has radically increased. And it's perplexed me for the last few years how in the world, on the one hand, the resource is so threatened mm -hmm. and they're moving towards Washington uh, Treaty um, listing, but the, the, the low-cost chain restaurants in Japan are serving it. So uh, it's, it's been very surprising. But to go back to your question, mm -hmm. why are they serving... Um, uh, unagi with with beef is very surprising, but this restaurant is primarily a beef restaurant, so maybe yeah. it's to to encourage some of the customers to try it, and also because the eel alone is more expensive than the eel with the beef, mm -hmm. um, uh, and so I guess that's the reason. But no, mm -hmm. it's not particularly appetizing. <laughs> To look at. It's not appetizing. It, it doesn't stimulate your appetite. Uh, no, it does. <laughs> Why don't you try a little bit? Yeah, I'm gonna try as well. The you said Thank you. this tastes like fish meal. Well, fish meal. <laughs> I thought it did, and mm -hmm. I'm amazed that it would. Please help yourself. Okay, I'm gonna. Ladies try. first. You know, they look like this is a little bit yellow. Too much yellow. Not typical kabayaki color. It's like, you know, like turmeric yellow color. Until you said that, I hadn't noticed it, but yes, yeah, I see what like you Yeah, it like I'm going to try. Very interesting. <laughs> no fish meat. <laughs> no fish meat. <laughs> Smell? Excuse me, Skia. <laughs> mm. It's tasty. How 
Mäuse. Um, I'll admit the fish meal taste I thought I sensed yesterday mm -hmm. isn't quite there today. Um, it's not uh, bad, mm -hmm. but whether it's eel, whether it's unagi, um, how it compares with the traditional Japanese unagi. And incidentally, the tr traditional Japanese unagi for the last <laughs> 10 or more years has often been the uh, European eel or the American eel. But this uh, is somehow different. Mm. Um, How different? The surface is uh, a little firmer, a little mm -hmm. um, stringier, mm -hmm. um, and it's not quite as tasty. Mm. This, yeah. And, and frankly, Although I'm not very sensitive to taste, there's a bit of an aftertaste. Mm. Um, something is missing. I agree with you. Something is missing. <laughs> I, I don't want to say it's, <laughs> it's not good, but I don't want to say it's so good. Um, you know, I don't think this is a taste of eel. And something, frankly... Some, some, something else. It, it, it's a travesty that the Japanese are ignoring all the worldwide expression of concern about the eel resource mm -hmm. and serving this kind of thing. Somebody in Japan, or well, Japan should take responsibility, uh, take leadership mm -hmm. in protecting the eel and in pre protecting marine resources. Japan uh, is very proud now that washoku, Japanese cuisine, mm -hmm. is has been what uh, 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 gotten some world acclaim very recently, mm -hmm. world, her heritage. world heritage. Um, but this violates the whole concept of uh, Japanese cuisine. Oh, you don't think it's Japanese cuisine? Well, um, it, it's questionable from that standpoint, but I think the more important is that it's ignoring the fact that the, the resource is threatened. How, mm. can, how can the Japanese be so irresponsible mm. uh, in uh, promoting uh, world heritage Japanese cuisine, mm. but serving and promoting a severely threatened resource? Mm. It's going to slap Japan in the face if they don't wake up. And you can say the same thing about uh, lots of other uh, seafood products. So I, I think uh, it's it's a uh, uh, a problem for Japan. Mm. But I think this is a kind of a compromise or the substituting. Yes. Because you know traditional Japanese unagi, Nihon unagi, uh, you know the threatened as a resource. You know it's going to be on the endangered list, and the price is you know going up, skyrocketing. Therefore, the the unagi sellers and the consumers uh, think about that we need some. Uh, substitute alternatives. So this is, you know, coming from Southeast Asia, so-called Bikara Unagi seed. Um, so, you know, as long as we are, we are supplying these kind of uh, alternative substituting Unagi, you know, we never ever aware of, you know, eel is endangered species. So how, you know, how do we balance the supply demand control and our motive to eat unagi. It's our, you know, it's our Japanese people, Japanese custom. It's our culture to eat unagi. You are correct. However, the Japanese culture typically has been that uh, unagi is, is a special treat in a special restaurant. Mm -hmm. And admittedly, the trend uh, to uh, lower price and broader distribution mm -hmm. has been taking place for several years now. But as I mentioned, it's only, I think, in the last three years or so that you see this. And I don't think this really is uh, Japanese cuisine. I think mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a departure. But I think we have to get back to the key point that mm -hmm. Japan needs to respect um, uh, marine resources and, uh, uh, and recognize when there's a problem with eel that they have to step back uh, and uh, um, not try to consume it the way they've done in the past. Mm -hmm. And 
even though it, this is from Southeast Asia, I think illicitly there's still considerable consumption of uh, Anguilla rostrata mm -hmm. from uh, North America and the, the European eel. And this provides an umbrella or a shield so that uh, although this may be the main item now, I think the consumption of North American and European eel continues. Mm -hmm. So I think Japan needs to step up and recognize there's a resource problem and, um, and uh, um, reduce consumption mm -hmm. or, or uh, at least acknowledge there's a problem and try to address it. Mm, sure, unless we reduce or we, we control our consumption, we couldn't keep eating eels. You know, eel is, you know, eel, eel is endangered, it's going to end up disappear. So you mean we have to eat smart, we have to uh, reserve the resources smart in a smart way. So that's the key to keep our culture. Well, it, it is endangered, and if they don't respect that fact, uh, they're not going to only endanger the eel, but, but they're going to endanger mm -hmm. Japanese cuisine for two reasons. Mm -hmm. One, because people are going to respect it less, and two, because uh, the, the resources they depend on mm -hmm. are going to uh, be uh, so severely threatened that uh, they're not available. Mm -hmm. So, sure. do you want to keep eating this <laughs> Bikala eel? Um, I will help you eat some of the rest of this one because it's multi-nai, it would be wasteful to throw it away, but no thank you, I don't care for any more fake eel. Yeah, sure. And also, I want to take responsibility for the fact that it is threatened and not try to conceal the fact. Uh -huh. So to reveal the fact, to understand the situation, and uh, then we have to think about our resources. That's what you mean? Acknowledge we have a problem and address it, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, Bill, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Enjoy your eel. <laughs> you too. <laughs> thank thank you. you. So, thank you for joining our program. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Don't eat eel. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>